On this edition of Around BCC, we look at how the country's financial crisis is impacting Bristol Community College. BCC looks to communicate with students on their turf, and we profile another couple who both used BCC to enhance their careers. Happy New Year and welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. As we start 2009, unfortunately all of our thoughts are still in 2008 and the country's financial crisis. It's impacting all of us, including all of us here at Bristol Community College. So we thought we'd take a few moments today to talk about how the college is coping with the financial crisis and not only talk about some bad news, unfortunately, but also some opportunities for students, faculty, and staff as we begin the spring semester coming up later this month. And to do that, I am joined and welcomed to be joined by Bristol Community College President Dr. John Sprager. Dr. Sprager, thank you for joining us and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Keith. Thank you for having me. Unfortunately, when, when we talked back in August uh, on our initial show for this academic year, the financial crisis really hadn't reared its no. ugly head at that point. We were looking at a great 2008, 2009 a year here at BCC, and we still are. Mm -hmm. But talk a little bit about how the college has been impacted up until this point with the financial crisis, and I guess it has to do with the state's finances also falling under, under some scrutiny. Yes, yes, and it's tied to the national and global situation as well. But you're right, when we spoke, uh, we were uh, looking at uh, a Roman increase of over 12%, which is terrific, and uh, wonderful that uh, students and people in this area are taking advantage of the educational opportunities that we have at Bristol Community College. And then we got some news, uh, not once, but twice uh, from the governor. Uh, uh, he took two cuts uh, from us uh, in this budget that we were budget year that we're already in. So that total uh, more than a million dollars, which is uh, a very difficult figure for Bristol Community College because we've always been on a very tight uh, budget situation uh, in the state. So what we have done is uh, to tr make sure that uh, our highest priority is uh, instruction and instructional support for our students. We want this to be almost invisible uh, for students uh, that they wouldn't know there's a budget crisis uh, on this campus uh, because we want the, uh, the academic programs and the student uh, service programs to proceed uh, accordingly. So. Uh so obviously the goal is, and, and always has been here at BCC, when there are tough financial times, and there have been during your tenure, there have been yes. other times, maybe not as dire as this one or, or as mm -hmm. severe as this one, that, that it's important to know that, that the process of, of, of students and learning is hopefully invisible to, to those who attend here, and that's, and that's probably your goal as well. That's our highest priority uh, at this point. Um, we've, of course, got to manage the budget, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't want students to feel or anyone in the area to feel that something is not available uh, because of these budget cuts. On the other hand, uh, we do have that uh, grim reality to mm -hmm. face, and uh, we have taken some measures in terms of internal policies, right. uh, travel for employees and uh, d uh, different events and activities uh, for again, internal, not student-related, uh, where we have cut back and uh, tried to uh, move forward as best we could. As people retire or resign, uh, we are not filling those uh, positions. I haven't taken the uh, course yet of a freeze, actually use the freeze. I think someone referred to it as a chill. It's a, it is on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Some of the important priorities and filling positions would be uh, uh, if uh, other people's money were involved, and that means uh, grants or uh, foundation money. Uh, if there is a chance for revenue enhancement, we certainly want to uh, uh, be available for that. And of course, not to, uh, to be sure that we don't um, jeopardize any of our instruction. Now, it's also important to note that in terms of the spring semester, uh, tuition and fees stay the same as they were in fall in the fall? Well, we're very proud of that. Uh, this month, as we speak, uh, we're looking at another increase in enrollment, uh, and uh, I'm very happy about that. Uh, and you, you're right. While some of our colleagues in learning across the state have laid off uh, some of the workforce and have raised fees uh, considerably, 
uh, to face this crisis. Uh, we are not raising fees in January and uh, for this spring semester uh, at Bristol Community College. Now, um, obviously, um, it, those who have followed the news statewide about the revenues and, and, and the tax revenues that, that the state um, has been hampered by or lack thereof, um, there's also potential that, you know, as we start 2009, there may be some more bad news depending on the, the tax revenues early in, in 2009 impacting the rest of the fiscal year. Um, what, have you, what are you hearing about that, that potential of, of maybe even more cuts? Well, you're right, and it's not good news. Uh, last month in December and this month in January uh, is really a busy month uh, uh, in any year for uh, the budget for the following year. Uh, it starts very early in the process of, uh, because of the state requirements. Uh, and we are uh, hearing uh, we're up to about 10% now uh, that we will be cut over and above uh, uh, what we received for this academic year. So, mm -hmm. so next year uh, there will be more cuts and uh, as you know it's a direct relationship to the uh, state and global uh, uh, situation. How have uh, the, the faculty and staff on campus reacted to this? Obviously it impacts everyone. Mm -hmm. um, have they been supportive in, in coming to you and say, listen, let's, let's see if we can work together to make sure that, again, mm -hmm. the main thing being the main thing yes. here at BCC, mm -hmm. that uh, we continue the student and, and educational support that the students deserve? Yeah, the, the BCC family has been wonderful, really. Uh, uh, they, uh, I think they appreciate the uh, highest priority I've given to no layoffs and preserving the workforce. And uh, under that context, uh, uh, I am receiving and soliciting a number of uh, suggestions about c cost savings and efficiencies in operation, uh, whatever we can do uh, uh, to help ease the situation without moving into more drastic measures. So the family has really rallied around uh, our efforts here. Everyone agrees about uh, instruction and instructional support. As you say, we've kind of drummed that in. That's our main thing. Um, and also, uh, I'm putting together an advisory board, a special advisory board, uh, to rec make recommendations to me uh, about next year. Uh, we're okay this year, and uh, I don't think that, uh, that we need worry about any drastic measures this year. However, if we continue to get 10% cuts, uh, mm. uh, you can imagine that we just can't go around business as usual. And I would help to have this broad-based advisory board uh, help me with these decisions. And I guess that there are some opportunities here as well for BCC. You had mentioned that enrollment is up. Yes. It was up in the fall. Yes. With, uh, the numbers in as we start the, the spring semester are, are higher. Yes. yes. Uh, it, it, it goes toward the affordability of community college mm -hmm. in here at BCC. And of course, we want to say that people and students come here for their educational, uh, what they get educationally here. But obviously, when it comes to finances, it's on people's minds and students who are looking for that education are turning to, to institutions like BCC and so there may be some opportunities I guess for BCC in terms of you know getting students in, in our door. Absolutely and uh, well, by the way uh, you mentioned that I've uh, collaboration in the region uh, we're working with UMass, Dartmouth and uh, Bridgewater State uh, and other co colleges in the area as well as the high schools uh, to try to see if there are ways that we can collaborate on uh, more activities uh, such as group purchases and uh, uh, sharing uh, resources, things like that, that would ease somewhat the uh, financial uh, stress. What are, as we look toward the, the spring semester starting, I want to talk a little bit about some good news now. What are some of the, the, the initiatives that people may be seeing this spring mm -hmm. that may be new here to BCC that, you know, hasn't been here in the past? Well, thank you for that. You're right. We need some good news, and uh, we have a... Uh, uh, one, one piece of the good news is we have an Institute for Sustainability and Post-Carbon Education. Mm -hmm. And Professor Nancy Lee Wood is our director of this new, brand new institute. I think it might be the first in the state uh, to talk about uh, our energy situation and the broad term of sustainability. What are we going to do to uh, be more green, if you will? And uh, we have a water consumption plan that we anticipate will cut our water use by almost 50 percent. I'm, I'm really amazed by that figure. And we have solar energy. Uh, Vice President Steve Kenyon is looking into uh, wind power uh, and uh, some turbines that we might be able to uh, uh, pr produce here at the college. And so we're looking for energy. I mean, that's a big issue and a new mm -hmm. initiative for us. We are. Um, 
putting together a Dabney collection in our library, uh, and uh, Professor Arthur Lothrop, Professor Emeritus, has mm -hmm. volunteered to serve as the curator with uh, Professor uh, Jose Costa and our Luso Centro, so another uh, dimension of our uh, uh, cultural activities, if you will. And of course, now we're looking forward to a full year, a full semester now of our new cyber cafe mm -hmm. in the library, and the students have really taken uh, uh, great interest in it and uh, really it's filled every time you go by there and uh, they love being there. So as much as you know th there are there are issues in terms of budget and finances uh, you know for those attending BCC it's going to be a seamless transition when you begin in uh, later on this month for the spring semester and uh, that'll you know that's the important thing that students will be able to gain their courses and gain their credits that they need to achieve their success. Mm -hmm. And uh, while it may be disappointing, President Sprague, that, you know, some of the college's initiatives going down the road may need to be, you know, put back in the uh -huh. back burner, um, it's important, as you said, that, you know, the main thing is the main thing. Yes. And, and students and, and their families really should be encouraged at the fact that, at least in the short term, mm -hmm. that things are still the same here at BCC. So that, that's, that's always good news. I have uh, talked about other people's money, and an <laughs> uh, uh, amazing initiative that we have is a Title III grant from Correct. the United States government of almost $3 million. And that's, again, to uh, str further strengthen our student services and connect. It's called the Connected College, and to connect the students and the faculty and staff uh, to each other and in the institution. I'm really looking forward to a number of activities hopefully uh, funded by other, uh, uh, other people's money, and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be the beneficiary of that. Well, President Sprague, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll, next time we speak to you, it won't be because of the circumstances of yes. the finances, or it'll be a good news about yes. the finances. But I think it was important for us to share with the community um, how you know, the financial crisis is, is impacting their community college. And uh, it's important to note that, again, things are... are are still full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some obstacles, but it's something that, that we'll all deal with together. So and thank you. Thank, thank you, you and I want to make there. sure that everyone knows Bristol Community College is available for them. It's an opportunity through education mm -hmm. in these dire times. All right, thank you, President Sprague. We'll take a break and we'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. College students are communicating with each other in ways that those in my generation and older never dreamed possible. And BCC is looking to use those methods to connect with students as well. Today's students in high school and college are now using online social networks to keep in touch with each other. For college students in particular, their network of choice is Facebook. Sophomore Chris Madeira says Facebook makes it easy for him to interact with his peers. A lot of my friends are out of state. They go to college out of state, so they live far away. Um, so it, it's really cool to keep in touch with people that you don't see on a daily basis without running up humongous um, long-distance phone call bills. Um, yeah, it's just a really cool way to keep in touch. Madeira says Facebook is better than email because it gives him more options to share information with friends. You can post a lot more stuff. You can, you know, post pictures and videos and it's not like you have to email a specific person a specific picture. Um, anyone can find you on Facebook, you know, and just look up your stuff and, you know, see how you're doing or whatever. They have this really cool feature where you can, like, find people you know, like, from high school and, you know, stuff like that. You really can't do that with email. This past summer, BCC decided to create its own presence on Facebook. College media specialist Nicole DeCambra says expanding the college's communications arm to new media fits well within the institution's strategic plan. We wanted to create a community online for students, specifically students, where they could interact. Uh, on a commuter campus, one of the criticisms is that they don't have that that opportunity to talk to other students and to talk to other people in the BCC community. And with Facebook, all of our students were already there, or a lot of our students were already there. So it provided a really great way to give them a chance to talk about all things BCC. 
The camera says the college's use of the Facebook page focuses on it being as hands-off as possible. Facebook has a lot of different kind of characteristics or applications that students can use and any, anybody can use to interact. There are event postings. You can create events to, and anybody can do that. You can promote basketball. We've started athletics this year, so it's been a really good tool to get people, not only people knowing that a game is coming up, but knowing that we have athletics in general and getting that buzz going because you're gonna, they're finding out about things not from the college but from other students, which is more likely to get them to pay attention. It goes back to you know a kind of credibility and a trustworthiness. If this you know Facebook page was just a regurgitation of you know the uh, community college public relations office, then it doesn't have the same credibility as you know, uh, a student telling another student, "I'm in a play, come see it." You're going to get more attention from that than from me saying, "We're putting on the Crucible, come see it." The BCC Facebook page has over 500 fans, including sophomore Steve Reese, who likes the fact that anyone can post information about the college. It's nice because, again, it's a little bit less filtered. Uh, it also would allow organizations within campus, I'm involved with the TV club, for instance, we can post some information if we have an event coming up or we're looking for members, things of that nature. Uh, something that we don't have to go and get approval from somebody and do a lot of legwork. You can just go up there and post information. Those who don't understand how Facebook works may question why the college would use the service when it has a fully functional website. The camera argues that the college views Facebook as just another marketing tool and resistance has been minimal. We haven't heard a lot of backlash from the community, on, from the BCC community, be that faculty, staff, alumni. Maybe it's because they see it as a really great resource. Maybe it's because they're starting to use it themselves. One of the biggest problems or hurdles is getting on and getting yourself familiar but with face Facebook the fastest growing demographic is people over 25. The camera says that BCC is not alone when it comes to educational institutions using Facebook. We've seen uh, a few college, community college do it and a lot more you know four-year colleges and universities. Uh, some of our uh, Local colleges like CCRI has a Facebook page, but it is more geared, toward, I believe, towards alumni development, which is not what we're trying to do. Um, I think that we are kind of the best practice for community college because we are finding ways to integrate um, students, and it's more geared towards that. And the people that we've talked to, our counterparts at other community colleges, are coming to us asking us for advice and our thoughts on how they should proceed with it. Uh, one of the biggest kind of stepping stones for everybody is, you know, deciding to do it. And in some ways you have to, you, you just have to do it and then, you know, work out your kinks as you go along. The camera says other members of the college community may eventually find their own need to sign on to Facebook. I think what we'll see going forward is more individual departments and, um, clubs and organizations around campus taking a greater kind of stake in it. Uh, one of the things that we did was we always wanted to do one main page which is the BCC Facebook page and then off that you have there's a favorite pages link or section and in that section we have uh, Grimshaw Goodwitch has their own page, uh, Deaf Studies has their own page and um, Graphic Design has their own page and while they might not have the fans, as they're called, that the main BCC page has, they have access to all of those people because those people, you know, we have over 500 users. Those 500 users see those pages. So I think we're going to start getting into more of that, um, attaching other smaller departments to the main BCC page. If you have an account on Facebook, do a search for Bristol Community College, and you too can become a fan of BCC's Facebook page. Now it's time for our Alumni in Your Community segment where this month we spotlight a local couple who both chose a non-traditional route to BCC.
Hi, I'm Joe Marshall, a graduate of BCC 1978. Hi, I'm Joanne Marshall, and I'm a graduate of BCC 1971. The uh, opportunity was afforded to me after high school where I, I received a uh, scholarship to uh, Bryant College, full scholarship. I had to maintain a, a, a 3.0 average, but after one semester, I didn't do that. So I still wanted to continue in school, but I had lost my scholarship. So I came home and I had to address my parents as to uh, you know, what had happened. I said, I still want to go to school. And of course, I was talking to my mother first, and uh, she said, no, you got to tell your father this. So he was, he was shaving, and I, I was standing behind him. I, this is very vivid. He, uh, he said, well, I already heard. And I said, well, you know, what can I do? And he says, you have two choices. And I said, uh, well, that's great, because I didn't think I had any choices. And he said, yes, you can either get a job or go in the service. And I said, well, I don't, you know, I don't know how to do anything. So then he said, well, you've got one choice. So I ended up going in the Air Force during that time. I spent a year and a half in Italy. And then when I came stateside, I got orders to go to Vietnam. I spent 10 months in Vietnam. I was uh, classified as a Morse uh, code intercept operator. So I didn't really get to do really what I wanted to do, and that was to, to get a trade that I can convert into civilian life. So I did come back home, got a job and uh, ran into a friend of mine who had just uh, gotten out of the Navy and he had joined BCC or had, had enrolled in BCC. And uh, he said, Joe, it's really great because the GI Bill will pay for you to go there. And again, figuring that out, I said, well, you know, I, uh, I could either get a part-time job at a uh, convenience store or a liquor store or I can go to school. So I chose to go to school and the uh, best thing I ever did because it all seemed to click. After I went to BCC, it was like, uh, wow, this, you know, this is all coming together now. So I started there. I completed my education there. I took accounting. And from there, I went to UMass Dartmouth. So I continued at UMass Dartmouth, went to work for an insurance company here, and um, graduated from UMass, continued with the insurance company, stayed with them for 18 years. And an opportunity came up where uh, a person said, well, several of us said, you know, we're going to go and try to do things on our own. So I opened my own practice. Uh, several other people who worked for that agency did it at exactly the same time. And um, a lot of the success is because of Joanne. She gave me the opportunity. I didn't have the pressures because she continued to work and had benefits of really um, uh, being the, the provider for the, for the family, because both of us worked at the same time. So because of that, I was able to open my own practice and have been in business since 1989 on my own. But I've been in the financial planning business uh, for 34 years. When I went to BCC, it wasn't a matter of wanting to go to BCC. I'm, I came from an old Irish family where there were five girls and two boys. And the girls do not get an education, the boys do, because the girls will find someone to support them. My father and mother were dead against any of the girls going to college. So I was the oldest and the first. So I wanted to go to BCC and I was working at the telephone company part time. So my mother and father said, there's no reason for you to have an education, but if you want to go, you're going to have to pay for it. So that was the only reason I couldn't afford SMU or any of the other ones because I was working night shifts at the telephone company and I could only work till 11. I had to have my parents sign a note so I could work at the telephone company. My major was liberal arts because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I think I learned more at BCC than I actually did in high school because they took an interest and they showed you how to do everything. And you were actually a person because after leaving BCC, I went to SMU and you were a social security number. Nobody ever knew what your name was. They just knew what your social security number was. I really missed BCC. Um, I thought it was a wonderful foundation. I didn't finish SMU. What happened is I went, I was still working at the telephone company and I worked at the telephone company until I retired in 98. I started in operator services, just like a lot of people in those days. Um, you know, operator, can I help you? Then from there I went to DA services, which was actually um, information um, for telephone numbers. From there I transferred to Brockton and I worked in what they called the dial bureau. When you need a telephone number, I had to find a telephone number for you. From there, as I was getting more and more educated, I kept taking exams because the phone company is well known for taking exams for advancement. Well, because of my background at um, BCC, 
and all the subjects in math and science that I took, I was able to pass a lot of the, co the, the uh, testing for the telephone company to advance till I finally ended up in Taunton many, many years later as a um, tech. Prior to retiring, I hadn't finished school. I was only a few credits short, and the telephone company had a program for adults at several colleges. So the telephone company actually sent me back to school, and I went to Eastern Nazarene in Quincy, graduated magnum cum laude with a, a BSBA in managerial um, economics and um, oh God, social studies. It was wonderful. Now I am presently doing real estate. I've been a real estate broker since 19, maybe 1988. And that was part-time work in order to make money because when we started this business, as Joe mentioned prior, earlier, we needed the money. So I was working two and three jobs so that he could get his business off the ground. So I was supporting the family while he was getting J. Marshall Associates started. And I play a lot of golf and I'm still very involved in BCC. Up until the last maybe two or three years, I was involved in the alumni board. We're in the, um, a lot of the programs for the alumni board and a lot of the um, fundraisers. For 18 years, I served on the BCC Foundation, and that gave me an opportunity to see what the needs were of the college, uh, because the foundation uh, gives grants, um, uh, student loans. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a very important part of the success of the, of the uh, school. And I had that opportunity for 18 years, and then another opportunity came up where I became a trustee, and this was last year, I became a trustee of the school, and it went beyond the campus at that point and went statewide. So then I, I, I got to see how we at BCC um, compared to other schools. Well, Joe and I were married in 1988. Um, we have three children. He always tests to see if I know what the date was. Sometimes she says 89. <laughs> we have three children, um, Kimberly, Carey, and Christine. They are all college graduates. None of them went to BCC, even though we really wanted them to. Yeah. And we have one grandson. Mm. The girls are very successful. Kimberly works here with Joe. Mm. She, she's uh, actually Joe's right arm. My daughter Carrie works for a company called Molecular. She has a very big title. I can never remember what it is. Um, and my daughter Christine is actually a high school teacher in East Bridgewater. So they've all, they're all college educated and probably because we kept encouraging them to at least get their education. And our grandson now is three, and he's saving for his college education. Yeah, he'll tell you, too. He empties <laughs> Papa's pockets out. Yeah, he'll tell you. <laughs> and I continue to, to speak over at BCC and sometimes at the high school because sometimes the students and the, the, uh, the people there don't realize that we were students once, too, and we had the same anxieties, the same problems that they have sitting in, in the classroom. So I like... I like that. I enjoy giving back and having the, the, the students realize that, you know, even though I didn't have a job, I didn't know what I was going to do out of high school, it eventually happens. But you've got to do something. That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching. And we leave you today with the sights and sounds of the Azorian Nativity exhibit at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery, as well as the holiday performance by the Fall River Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm.